Welcome to Black Cat 2015. I got a couple of quick announcements here. Uh, there's going to be a reception tonight in the business hall at 5.30 p.m. That's located in Shoreline A. Uh, there's maps running around if you need to find out where that's at. The, uh, the Pony Awards also will take place tonight in Mandalay BCD Room at 6 p.m. Um, if you haven't already turned your phone off, please do that now. Nobody else wants to hear your ringtone, no matter how cool you think it is. And uh, you're in Jasmine Ballroom, so if that's not where you're intended to be, that's where you are. This is the session server-side template injection RCE for the modern web app with James Kettle. James? What? Thanks. Thank you. Welcome. Can you hear me? Is the mic working? I can't tell from here. Okay, great. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning. This is, this is server-side template injection. And you may be familiar with being so focused on exploiting a particular vulnerability that you missed something that was staring you in the face. Or with feeling tired of seeing report after report after report with nothing better than cross-site scripting in it. Or with simply really wanting to get a shell on a box. In this session, I'll introduce to you a vulnerability that can easily be mistaken for cross-site scripting, but isn't, and share with you a six-step process for hijacking template engines and getting shells on boxes. My first encounter with template injection was around 18 months ago on a client, on a client engagement, and it was quite a stressful environment. We were all crammed into this tiny room, and there was a whiteboard up with a tally of the number of shelves that each person had got within the last few weeks. I'm sure you can imagine how that felt. And the application that I was testing had some quite strange behavior. It let you customize emails that would be mass sent out to users, and these emails contained some dynamic content. So where the template that I could edit said, dear user.first name, the, the email that the user saw would contain their actual name. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I wonder how I can abuse this. I know what to do. I'll change it from user.first name to user.password. And it will tell me everybody's passwords. Brilliant. So I tried that, and it failed completely. But what it did do was tell me that this input was being processed by the server as a free marker template. So I looked up the free marker template documentation, and in the frequently asked questions section, it said something like, is it, a safe, is it safe to allow users to submit templates if they're untrusted? And the answer it gave was no, and it went on to list all the terrible things that someone can do to your server with a malicious template. And this led me on a trail of breadcrumbs through the documentation to an exploit that got me a full shell on the server and access to a healthy amount of sensitive financial information, which was great. It was really just a one-off event, though. It was quite lucky that the server made it really obvious that this input was being processed as a template. And it was also lucky that the free market documentation was so forthcoming to hackers about how dangerous it was. Nine months ago, though, at Port Swigger, we received a report that Burp Suite was failing to find a blatant cross-site scripting vulnerability, which isn't something which happens every day. So I investigated manually and found, once again, the server was behaving in quite an odd way. That's why we'd missed the cross-site scripting. And thanks to my prior encounter with template injection, I saw the issue for what it really was, which was template injection. So the client thought they had a, maybe a medium severity cross-site scripting issue on their site, but they had something that was potentially a lot more serious. This left me with a couple of questions. Exactly how common is template injection? How many times has someone found cross-site scripting and not realized that it's actually a symptom of a much more serious issue? And secondly, how serious is template injection? Is it 
only free marker that can be used to get shell on a server quite easily, or are other template engines also quite exploitable? So I decided to investigate and got some quite interesting results that I'll share with you now. First, I'll just introduce template injection, talk about what it is, how it happens, and then I'll walk through this process for identifying and building a working exploit for whatever template engine you found in whatever environment it is. And then I'll show this process being applied to five of the most popular template engines to see how they hold up. And these engines have been selected because they show the different things that happen when you, when you apply the exploit development process to them. Then I'll demonstrate remote code execution zero days in a couple of real web applications that you may have heard of but hopefully don't have installed on your networks. And then take five minutes of questions and wrap up. What is template injection? It's simply when user input is unsafely embedded into a template, like this example here. If you look at the first argument to, this, to the render function, uh, you've got user input being concatenated into this template. And that means that if the user input contains a template expression, that will be evaluated by the server. That's the core of this vulnerability. Just to be absolutely clear, this second example here is not vulnerable to, to template injection. You still have user input in the first name variable being passed into a template, but it isn't being put into the template itself, it's just being passed in as an argument. If a user were to embed a template expression inside that variable, it would just be ignored. And as with all vulnerabilities, this can happen by accident. However, I've also seen it happen through developers intentionally letting users e edit templates in quite a few different circumstances because they want to offer this functionality to users and they maybe don't realize quite how dangerous it is. On a high level, to prove that this issue is serious, first you need to find that there's some kind of template injection happening. Then you need to figure out you need to identify what the template engine in use is exactly, then simply build an exploit for it, which is where things get really involved. So, how do you recognize template injection? Given that there are scores of different template engines out there, and they're all slightly different. Well, the way to do it is to embed a template expression and if you use something really, really simple, like 7 times 7 then you've got a piece of syntax there which will be supported by almost all te template engines. So if you send that payload, uh, highlighted in green, and look at the output, you can tell whether it's been evaluated by the server or not. And you could just repeat this for the, for the various different common types of syntax that the template engines offer, which are listed on the bottom of the slide. There's actually a second way in which template injection can happen. The user input might not be being input directly into the template, it might be being placed inside a template expression. And this, this is even harder to spot, it often won't result in cross-site scripting, because the user input is just like a variable name. And if you make any change to, to this input, or any naive change, like not realizing what's going on on the server, then you'll get an error message back, or you'll just get the empty string. So in order to recognize this, we need to, we need to safely close the template expression and then embed something after it. If you, get input, if you don't get input reflection straight off, but you do when you try to close a template, then that suggests there's some kind of template injection happening, and then you can follow up by trying, by trying to embed simple mathematical expressions and the like. So, 
Now you know there's some kind of template injection happening. How do you build an exploit for it? You can start off with a really simple payload like this that just confirms that there is some kind of evaluation happening. And then you can build a decision tree based on the behavior of different template engines. So if that 7x7 syntax works, we know that the server must be using one of a specific set of template engines which support that syntax, uh, one of which is Smarty. So if we send Smarty comment syntax and that payload works as well, we've confirmed that the server is running Smarty. And if that fails, then we can try some, di some different syntax, which is attuned to a different engine and so on. So using this strategy, without, without relying on something like parsing error messages that might have any kind of format, we can easily automate how to figure out exactly which template engine is in use. This is a subtree of the strategy used by Burp Suite to identify server-side template injection. So if you're a Burp Suite user, then at the end of this presentation, you'll find an update waiting for you that will automate these two steps. It will detect template injection, and it will try to identify which template engine is in use. Once you know which the template engine is, things get